Hello, I've been doing a um, bit of contemplation, a bit of reflection on the whole subject of ghosts. Now this is a scene that I have witnessed in many a film and to varying degrees in the external world. The scenario is basically you've got a desperate situation and maybe the person you're with may have been, been shot. Just as, this is just as an example to illustrate a point. And you're in that distraught fight or flight mode. You, you rush out into a public place, there may be 30, 40 people and you're going around, can you help me, can you help me, I'm desperate, what, whatever the event is. In a slightly less desperate, sort of, shall we say, life or death moment, you may survey that crowd and be drawn to particular individuals, maybe there's some, con some subconscious interaction that that person may be a kind soul and will be able to help you in some way. Hopefully that sort of gives you the sort of general sort of picture. But now I want to flip that. Imagine that you have found yourself dead, i.e. no longer with a physical body, but you had these great plans, these desires and things with the love of your life that you were going to do, and now that opportunity has been taken away from you. Now if imagination, through feeling, creates reality, I wonder what that energy and feeling would do. Now if we turn this back into the physical realm, most aches and pains, or pretty much all aches and pains in the physical body are stuck energies. They're not flowing so they manifest as a pain that then sends a signal up to the brain, which generally <laughs> we totally misinterpret and oh it's a pain got to suppress it instead of face it. Now going back to the scenario that you've left a residual energy which may actually have an undertone of though it is love, love of another and you've been ripped away from the physical body and can no longer carry on that experience, I would imagine there would be a slight undertone of resentment and a desperation and in much the same way as in the physical realm, the spirit or the residual energy of the one that has passed may also now be going through that sort of, can you help me, can you help me? But it's looking for one that is open to channel through. I was given a perfect analogy, thank you Steve. Um, it's something I've also saw at several, I've seen it several times but never quite in this way and that's when you see these blocked drains and it's raining heavy and of course that water cannot go down that drain. So it will keep flowing and it will look for the next available conduit. And we are basically conduits of spiritual interaction with this material realm. So you have this situation with a loved one that is like a stuck energy that refuses to let go of this reality but now needs to look for a, a host to try and communicate through. The one that is left behind as it were in this material world that is still living Imagine if they cannot come to terms with the loss, with the grief. So I'm going to ask, see I'm not, I can't give you answers, I'm going to pose you some questions here. 
Could it be that that not coming to terms with a loved one passing is the power supply for that residual energy which therefore keeps the ghosts, should we say, alive for, for a wonderful bit, or in some sort of living memory? I was, something that came into my mind the other day, maybe between, in the making of the previous two videos, it's around about the same time, I can't actually remember which day it is, but there is a beautiful series um, from the French television company called Canal Plus called The Return. Basically, in that story, you have, if I remember rightly, it's years since I've seen it, but you have a village that is flooded and there is a, a loss of a large amount of this population. I think it, it's a dam that breaks and it basically in the 1950s takes out a large number of people. But it's called The Returns because they return. Now, the central character called Victor he appears on a hairpin bend in the French Alps and the school bus with maybe 30 children of that village. The driver swerves thinking it's a real boy and of course they all, that's the end of them. And you, you can imagine the ripple effect and the devastation to, if it's a small community and 30 children, basically a whole generation is wiped out. Can you imagine how that grief energy would be that strong. Now, I'm not saying that it goes to that level, but when you consider how many people die every day but across the whole spectrum of time expired for whatever reason, what is called an unplanned event, a road traffic accident, um, all manner of reasons why a person would would sort of leave this realm, this physical realm. Ah, uh, where are we going with this? It'll come back to a minute. You see that the the flow has sort of dissolved. Um, it will come back. <laughs> so you've got this residual energy. Um. Yes, this is where I was going with this. So it's safe to say that every day, hundreds, thousands of people die. Some just pass peacefully in their sleep. Others may be more violent, may be more horrific, may be just very sudden and um, or unexpected. But then as you've got this, well, what I was going to, this is what I was going to say. So really there are not that many ghosts because there's only a certain amount of people that are on a frequency that can detect these apparitions as it were and really it's such a small percentage because it's like well why isn't there all these ghosts why isn't everybody seeing them why aren't they all appearing so I feel the common denominator is something to do with stuck energy. Now here's the thing, you've got unresolved grieving going on, you've got a residual energy that's left behind. It's almost like a an app with all the data of the one that has passed but without a physical body, but so it's it's like an energy with the imprint, the impression of that person that is no longer with a physical body. <coughs> and so when it can find, it works like an app, it can find a conduit to channel through and then it will supply you with details that you could actually pass on to the one that is grieving, those sort of details it's like well how could anybody know that They're, but think what it would do as well this is something where you have to I feel reflect 
on the reflection. Put yourself in the shoes of the one that is grieving. How would that information feel to you? I feel this is what is shown in that series, The Returned. There is one particular character in that. He's an old man living on his own. His wife had uh, died, I think, in the 1950s or 60s. It was the great love of his life. Now, 30 years later, he's an old man. He's in his 80s. He practically has a heart attack because he, he doesn't want... His rational mind won't admit that this is his wife from 30, 40 years ago looking exactly the same as she did on the day that she died in that particular case in a car crash. What that would do to the person that has that grief to be confronted with that. So it, I feel also, if you have this residual energy that appears to be your love, I feel there is a opposite polarity because if that feeling of I'm not accepting that I've died, I've still got things to do in this physical world, would that be sort of almost like a, an energy that is turned from love to a negative love of resentment that is now basically acting like a vampire? I feel these are things that are worth keeping in mind, keeping open to, finding the balance. Now, Yolanda and her True Love Talk series mentioned about angels. The people that can sort of Pop into your life. It, I've not gone as far personally as trying to do a background check and see if they exist in the system or whatever. Um, but she talks of them in the in the way of they're like uh, angels. They sort of come into your life and they help you. Um, I feel also if it was genuine, real love, that it would come through in a positive way in the physical because when you're dealing with ghosts you're dealing with an interaction with a, a realm that is past that is dead that is no longer in the present so when we have these pains that are manifestations they're stuck energies that they can be cleared biofield cleaning for example that definitely works i'm talking from a, an experience of the 144 hertz i felt almost like a physical blockage shift that's just my personal experience whether you believe it or not i mean there's all different hertz frequencies for these tuning forks and i would say if you're seeing particular numbers if there is a biofield tuning frequency on those numbers that it may be worth investigating a bit further and maybe even having a biofield tuning on that uh, numeric frequency. Um, I refer you across to Julia's Simplicity Refield. She does biofield tuning so if you feel that would work for you then maybe go a little bit further, maybe even try it. My personal testimony is that it does work and it has brought a new level of understanding, of inner standing about a lot more. So the point of this is with these ghosts, they're apparitions, they're not part of the living reality, they're impressions. If you have one of these energies that is now trying to channel through you and live their life through you, would you say that that is benevolent? Would you say that is in contravention of cosmic laws of free will, for example? I'm offering no, it's this or it's that. I'm posing these as a series of questions. The primary reason I'm making this video is because we seem, and it seems very much 
to do with this Gemini full moon as being a marker. I'm not saying it's exclusive to that. And many of you may have had similar experiences of something, an energy, a spirit, as it were, that is trying to continue its life on borrowed time by trying to operate through another. But is that really right? Because the one that is being operated through that is the channel, are they then able to live their life or are they living the life of another? Is that energy projecting itself and trying to take over? To me that doesn't feel right. It feels like love has now been twisted into a far more negative mask, shall we say, and it masquerades as the being that was. It it has a spiritual residue energy. It is basically trying to cross a line, as it were, between the metaphysical and the physical that maybe transgresses cosmic laws. But I've been through an experience of this very recently. I'm not going to go into the details of it, but suffice to say that it was actually a beautiful experience because for the, for the one reason and that is because I was able to stay in the present and observe myself observe all this chatter but the mind was now suddenly creating of trying to make sense of what is happening that's like I don't believe what I'm hearing here um, but hold on a minute the focus actually is now going on me in the fact that it's I'm creating feelings with inside myself or allowing feelings to come up. And this is why it is so important to be the observer. Because it is your lower eye consciousness that is going to put up all these objections. This is something very different. This is something very unknown. This is something that your lower self is going to be totally unfamiliar with. It's going to be unfam in unfamiliar ground. It is your inner child, so treat it with kid gloves would be my advice, embrace it, comfort it, let it know that everything is going to be all right. You, you become the parent of yourself in that you bring yourself back in within yourself. It's, it's like a, an internal embrace and it's like, look, I know you're scared, but everything is going to be perfectly fine. Trust the higher you inside yourself would be, should we say, my advice on this. Whatever happens, like with these things, they can come at, seem to come at any time, but I have to take full responsibility because I did say last week to the universe out loud, give me a sign. Well, it certainly has, and I'm very grateful of that because I can see the positive, I can see the negative, I can see what appears to be positive, which is, is actually negative. It also again opens up the question, is it unresolved grief that is the empowerment, that this residual energy, what we would call a ghost, will then feed on? Is there something behind that that is operating and using that as a mask that is actually very negative? There is certainly an interaction between ourselves and this external reality. So I don't know the answers to this, but I'm just speculating. I'm putting out, based on the observations, the experiences I've had so far. I, I, I mean, I can remember, I remember a time I was sitting in a room with a large number of people, and obviously I was that most receptive conduit and my back went unearthly ice cold the front of me was warm but the back was it's a cold i've never experienced before or since it was um i can't think of the right supernatural or best for want of a better word but it was an unearthly cold and it oh this isn't it's like no way i do not want something hijacking this life experience to live the life of 
It seemed to be an entity that would appear to be from the 19th century. I got the impression it was to do with an abortion or a loss of a child and it was a grieving young mother, but that's just a feeling I got. I never... I thought, no, I'm not having that because that ice-cold feeling, it, it... But we can do it with love because it's a stuck energy, so... Help others when you can. Does that necessarily apply just to the physical world? What if it is a stuck energy of a loved one that is having trouble accepting that they no longer have a physical body and are doing everything, refusing to leave the physical realm? They're, they're trying to cling on. It's a, a belief, shall we say, like a belief system. So they're trying to hold on. But they're, to be able to hold on, they need to draw energy from the living. But are ghosts evil as such is another other aspect to this. Um, there certainly seems to be a basis of love, but it would seem to be a love that turns toxic. Maybe love in this physical realm has to be in the living, otherwise it is no longer living love. It's just a memory that possibly is being hijacked by something that is less than benevolent, shall we say. But in that, it also, I feel, if you stay neutral, it, open, it opens up to see there is a beauty to all of it. Although it might seem to be a negative polarity, but there is also an aspect to it that we can balance it and respond with a positive or a, by staying neutral, we can allow a positive energy and that will help that residue energy of that spirit that is no longer in this realm to fully pass because maybe they will, maybe that is stopping their own feelings, they're actually stopping them coming back into a reincarnation to pick up, I can't say where they left off, but uh, well, yes, pick up where they left off in the sense of their spiritual growth, their spiritual journey in a new avatar. So, I, like I say, I don't know the answers to this, but I'm just putting this out there because I feel there is probably a pattern that many of you are, or recently have had sort of experiences of this sort of level and presentations that may look to be horrific, um, maybe luring you with where you feel you're doing good intentions, but what are you really dealing with when it is in the unseen? Can you be sure that it is something benevolent? Does it feel right to you? Does it feel something you really don't want to go near? That, uh, these are, again, these are questions you really need to ask yourself. There is no one size fits all with this. Just take the whole spectrum of the day you die. Um, that could be all manner of scenarios generally, and I hopefully they're just passing peacefully in that last time you go to sleep, but you don't physically wake up from again. Generally, that would seem to be what does happen. But obviously there are less pleasant, horrific and so on. Um, but if those energies become stuck and they're having a, becoming like an interference with this reality, it's why I feel it's uh, help others where you can applies to as much the non-physical as the physical. There is clearly an interaction and we are just from the within the physical perspective of something far more. That's how I feel about it anyway. So, love to you all, and do share in any comments or in uh, any experience you've had, what your feelings are on this, what experiences you've had. I'm, I'm actually looking for patterns, um, shall we say, trying to make sense of it, and helping hopefully to be able to then 
see that there is a blueprint to say, well, look, be, be careful and watch for this, because this can happen. Forearmed is forewarned. Um, because the huge range of emotions that all these things bring up are, well, <laughs> but it is all about centering yourself and being in the present and just observing and being the witness to what is being presented to you. And <coughs> equally important, reflecting, reflecting upon, being the reflection, because what information you take from the experience and then if you were to pass it on to one who is still stuck with grief consider the effect that that may have on them it may actually push them over the edge imagine if it was you're stuck with grieving for a loved one and then you're told that the spirit of your loved one is stuck as well and can't move on how would you feel about that um, would that be the kindest thing to say to them anyway um, Hopefully that's given you plenty to think about and yeah, do share your experiences and comments and let's see if we can, by talking this out together, we can make at least make some sort of sense of it all so we can help others through this maze between the physical and the metaphysical and make the journeys easier for ourselves by sharing our experiences. Sharing is caring after all. So love to you all and ta-ta for now.